Justin from Campfire. I'm here to give you a whole bunch of tips on how to cook on, uh, on, on open fire. I think the first and most important part, clearly, is your fire, right? So you've got to make sure you've got good coals, good dry wood, not smoky wood. So make sure you get your fire right. I think that's the first tip I could say to you guys. Tip two for me, um, I think time is your friend, right? So you, particularly if you're camping, you're, you're, you're at the campsite all day, you know, don't be afraid to put something on low and slow. You know, use the day to cook up with because it's a really cool and fun way to do it. So use the day because it's fun. Tip number three for me really is around um, having fun and, and trying it really. Like it's, you know, you can bake in it. Today we've done sausage rolls uh, and then tonight we're having a stew and then tomorrow we're doing a, a smoke up. So, you know, just really just play around and have fun. You, you really can't screw it up. Uh, and so for us, just trying, that's the best thing to do. Yes, yeah, so the people often ask me, oh, I've never done it before, you know, Ooh, what do I do? Uh, so I'll give you the top five things you need. First and foremost, you need some campfire cookware. So whether you want a camp oven, whether you want a fry pan, whether you want to do jaffa lines, any one of those and any one of the campfire products are amazing. That's the first thing. Second thing is, you know, obviously you're playing with fire, so you want to make sure you've got protection. So protective gloves at campfire make a really cool set of protective gloves which is great when you're sort of handling fire, even raw fire for that matter, and you know, and you'll see us playing around with it a bit today in some of this footage. Uh, the third thing I would say to you is, is making sure you've got a, a utility kit, so making sure you've got things like, you know, spatulas and tongs and all the things you need to cook with. Uh, I'd say for your fourth thing, uh, make sure you've got some, some other types of appropriate cookware, like things like, um, a lid lifter so it's really important to making sure you've got a lid lifter to take your lids on and off and then I'd say the last thing is a trivet or a, or a steaming rack and, and probably one of each is the best right so um, often a trivet is, is effectively a, a grate that sits on the, on the base of your camp oven and that separates the, coal, the raw fire of the coals from whatever you're cooking so if you, if it's a really good way to, to make sure you're not burning the base of your meat or your nachos or your sausage rolls or whatever else you're cooking in so I'd say they're the top three things. So great cookware, protective wear, uh, making sure you've got the right utensils, making sure you've got the right uh, camp oven cook accessories like a lid lifter and things like that. And then the last one is making sure you've got trivets. Other than that, you should be sweet to go and, and, and good luck. I don't think there's anything better than cooking on, on raw fire, right? So, you know, all these, you know, people in MasterChef all fluffing around with it, trying to work it out. The reality is it's super easy. You just gotta get in it, you gotta do it, you gotta try it. Um, and there's no better flavour, so the flavour from the smoke, the raw heat from the coal, your ability to be able to cook in and around fire is amazing, and, and for me, um, it's the rawest cooking in itself, so for me it's a, it's a massive passion, uh, and the reason I love to do it. So, you know, if you haven't tried it, just grab yourself a campfire, camp oven, put the fire at home, whack something in and, and give it a shot, because it's actually super easy. Um, and if you need any tips or tricks, jump onto our, our, our website, jump onto our Instagram, We've got a whole bunch of cool stuff there for you guys to get into it. So today we've got the brisket on guys, it's smoking away, it's been in for maybe half an hour or so, just trimmed it off, salt and pepper only on your brisket guys, don't kid yourself, no fancy rubs, the fancy rubs are for this bad boy. We've got a big pork butt here, uh, you see it's got a fat cap on it, the fat cap's probably just turning around, you see that the fat cap's quite thick. Um, you don't need all that on there. You want to keep some on though because it helps protect the meat while you're cooking it. And you do want a bit of fat, uh, you know, obviously after it's rendered down into your pulled pork. So, uh, so what I'll do is I'll just take a, take a little bit of the fat cap off. Um, I'll take you through the rub and then, uh, and then we'll rub this bad boy up like we're massaging it and then whack her in the smoker for uh, 12 hours. You can leave it on if you like, but the reality is you're just going to end up pulling it out. When you start pulling it, you'll find it just ends up falling off anyway. So um, don't want to cut too deep though, because you don't want to bring the you don't want to bring the flesh out. There's a little bit of flesh coming out there. You want to keep a nice protective layer of fat on it. Um, but just give it a bit of a trim, and you know it's a bit of theatre at the same time. So. Beautifully. And by rights, there's a bone that sits inside of it. If we smoke it the right way, we should be able to just pull the bone straight out and nothing on it. Alright, 
Right guys, time for the rub. So for our brisket, like I said, just half a cup of pepper, ground black pepper, half a cup of salt. Don't put anything more on the, on the brisket. But for the pork, we're gonna start with brown sugar. So there's about, a, about, a, a, about almost half a cup of brown sugar. Uh, a little teaspoon of, uh, of uh, black pepper. We've got some paprika. We've got some chilli powder, get a bit of heat in it. We've got some onion powder. And we've got a little bit of garlic powder. So all those, so we'll toss those all together. Fashion massage, you'll see the colour come out obviously from the paprika, which is nice and pungent. Up. You never over over season too much. And really, pull pork's one of the things when you when you when, a, when you talk about smoking pull pork's one of the things you can't really get wrong. Um, the reality is you just got to cook it down. So obviously, like brisket, it's a super super fatty. You know, as far as muscle goes, a really 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 heavy muscle cut of meat. So you just keep cooking and cooking and cooking. And if you cook it low and slow, you really can't screw up. So you can see the brisket in there already. I'm just gonna pop this in. Now anytime you put cold meat into anything, it's obviously gonna drop the internal temperature of what you're cooking. So, what we'll do now is we'll close her up. Check the internal temp. We're still running at about, around about 110, 120 or 250 Fahrenheit. Um, putting cold meat in anything or putting cold in anything hot will actually do too will drop your temperature pretty fast. So you'll see that starting to drop now. We'll just moderate that, and then we leave it there for a good four to six hours before we'll crush it, and then when I crush it, I'll take you guys through how to do that. And then 10 in about 12 hours, we'll eat it. Yeah. Come <laughs> on.